Good morning.
Good morning. I'm Corey Interdes, the commentator. Happy Mother's Day. Today we'll be honoring a blessed mother by crowning her with flowers. The students who received First Holy Communion last Sunday will be part of the procession and will bring in the crown. If you brought a flower and would like to join in the procession, we invite you to proceed to the vestibule and line up behind the altar servers. As you come up in procession, place your flower on a vase set up along the altar rail and proceed to your seat. The presider for this Mass is Father Daniel Nascimento. Please stand and let us begin. Our opening song is Bring Flowers of the Rarest.
Well, we want to honor our Blessed Mother this day on Mother's Day. Uh, so we wish all of the mothers present Happy Mother's Day. We also honor our Blessed Mother, she who suffered the crown of um, uh, suffering on Good Friday. So today we honor her with the crown of flowers. And we thank you also our first communicant students who came to join us today. So we invite you to return back to your parents. So go ahead, children. Second graders, you may go back to your parents. So we begin our prayer as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord be with you. It's so good that we are able to come and give thanks to God, not only for our mothers, but for the gift of his son on this Easter Sunday. And of course, uh, we also give thanks to God for his mother, uh, our Lord's mother. Mindful that we are a people in need of God's mercy and forgiveness, we turn then to God to forgive us our faults, our failures, but also that the Lord may heal us of the divisions and hurt that we've caused one another. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas continued on from Perga and reached Antioch in Pisidia. On the Sabbath, they entered the synagogue and took their seats. Many Jews and worshipers who were converts to Judaism followed Paul and Barnabas, who spoke to them and urged them to remain faithful to the grace of God. On the following Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and with violent abuse, contradicted what Paul said. Both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first But since you reject it and condemn yourselves as unworthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For so the the Lord has commanded us, I have made you a light to the Gentiles, that you may be an instrument of salvation to the ends of the earth. The Gentiles were delighted when they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord. All who were destined for eternal life came to believe, and the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The Jews, however, incited the women of prominence who were worshipers, and the leading men of the city stirred up a persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their territory. So they shook the dust from their feet in protest against them and went to Iconum. The disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, had a vision of a great multitude which no one could count, from every nation, race, people, and tongue. They stood before the throne and before the Lamb, wearing white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. Then one of the elders said to me, these are the ones who have survived the time of great distress. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they stand before God's throne and worship him day and night in his temple. The one who sits on the throne will shelter them. They will not hunger or thirst anymore, nor will the sun or any heat strike them. For the Lamb who is the center of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can take them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can take them out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today's gospel was very short, but in it, in it, it has the essence of what is really important, that we all belong to God, just as a sheep is cared for by the shepherd. So our God today, we celebrate him as the good shepherd. And if imitation is the highest form of praise, then the work of Catholic charities in imitation of the Good Shepherd, gives high praise to God. I heard about the Jeremiah Mosley back in 2019. He was given an award for his service to Catholic Charities Residential Therapeutic Program. It's a program that serves up to 60 youth from ages seven to 18. 
But Jeremiah wasn't just a volunteer there. He had at one time been a resident there. He shared that he was first introduced to the foster system when he was only six years old. Six years old. His family had been involved with drugs and alcohol, so he spent the next few years going in and out of different foster homes. Prior to arriving at Catholic Charities at the age of nine, if you can imagine, he had been in seven other foster homes and two other group homes. He said he never felt cared for and it felt like people were doing it for the money instead of caring for the kids. But he shared that when he arrived at the Catholic Charities Residential Program in San Rafael, he felt he found a home. And with their equestrian program, he was able to put his trust in horses and on the staff. Kent Eagleson was the director of the program there, and he remembers that he, when he first saw Jeremiah, he saw that he came there to heal. And he was a good influence with the other kids because he would also encourage them to open up and share with the staff. He would tell the other kids, you're not alone here. You always have someone to talk to or a shoulder to cry on. Eventually, after four years at Catholic Charities, Jeremiah transitioned to his final foster home and be, until he became an adult. His foster father, Patrick, said that Catholic Charities gave him the tools to succeed in life. And Jeremiah said that before Catholic Charities, oh, he was a handful. He was a wild one. He was not in a state of mind to survive anywhere and probably would have ended up in the streets. But Catholic Charities helped him find a path to success. Today, he has a successful career in finance. You know, of all the things that Jesus said, there was one that caught me kind of by surprise as a young adult. Uh, and Jesus said, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these. Does that surprise you? Whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and will do greater ones than these. I mean, geez, we do greater works than our Lord? We don't have his wisdom. We can't perform miracles. How can we do works greater than our Lord? But then seeing the works of Catholic Charities, they give me a glimpse into what Jesus meant. Collectively, we can serve more people than Jesus alone as one person can do in his limited time here on earth. So for example, Andrea, who was at the age of 19, became a client of Catholic Charities. Pregnant at 18, she moved out on her own and tried to juggle between going to college part-time, working part-time, and caring for a baby full-time. Well, can you imagine how well that worked out? <laughs> Absolutely not. She wasn't able to do any of those. She was referred to Catholic Charities who helped her with rent assistance gave her clothes for her baby, which enabled her to focus then on school. Today, she has three children, and so that little baby is now 13, and she works at Salesforce in their nonprofit department, helping other nonprofits um, apply for um, donations from her company. So Catholic Charities was able to accomplish, uh, accompany her through those early years when she felt scared and she felt ashamed of herself. Today, she's able to stand strong and confident and credits it to the work of Catholic Charities who never judged her. And she said they not only physically supported her, but also spiritually supported her. So it's true what Jesus said. 
Together, we will do greater things than what Jesus could do alone. If you go on Catholic Charities' website, they have some pretty amazing statistics. And it's, uh, these numbers keep changing as uh, they serve more and more people. But on their website, they list, so far this year, they have done the following. They have safely housed over 1,000 people. They have given rent subsidies to over 1,800 people. They have served over 9,000 immigrants. They have helped over 32,000 people. And they have distributed over 220,000 meals and groceries. In Jesus' ministry, he didn't simply pray with people, but he was involved with their lives. He ate with them, listened to them, cried with them, and helped them. Likewise, Catholic Charities is the social service arm of the church. We help everyone not because they're Catholics. In fact, many of them are not. But we help them because we're Catholics. And that's the ministry that Jesus entrusted to us. If you remember your corporal works of mercy, you remember what they are? Feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, and sheltering the homeless. Like mothers whom we honor this day and who cares for their children, Catholic Charities is the maternal side of the church who has not only helped people like Jeremiah and Andrea and made a positive difference in their lives, but also in their children and in the generations to come. We are one of the largest, oldest, and most comprehensive social service provider in Northern California, annually serving 60,000 vulnerable individuals of all faiths. So you can be proud of our work and of our church who seeks to imitate the Good Shepherd caring for all of God's children. With our support, their work becomes our work and their client's success will become our success. Amen. Let us renew our faith then in God who is like a good shepherd to us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Because we hear the voice of the Good Shepherd and trust that he knows our voice and responds, we offer these prayers for ourselves and for our world. For our church and all Christians, that we may share with every person we meet the great love that God has entrusted to each of us, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they work to ensure peaceful and just self-determination for all peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our 
for all mothers that like Mary the mother of God they receive the strength wisdom and joy to spread forgiveness and patience and love within their families and their communities we pray to the Lord for the gift of human life that we may ever cherish and defend it we pray to the Lord For the sick, especially Stephen Miley, Stefan Leluc, Father Bill McCain, Margarita Rios, and all our homebound parishioners and those suffering from long-term illness, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Susan Drake, Alfredo Zuniga Gallardo, Mary Jane Lemmett, Josephine Howell, and all mothers who have passed into everlasting life, May they find eternal rest in the love of the risen Lord and his mother, Queen of Heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our this Mass is being offered for the repose of the souls of Mary Donnelly and John and Marion Fox, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. O Lord, our shepherd, who help us find our shelter and food in you, look kindly upon our petitions and your new mercy. Grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The song for the prep... For the, the song for the preparation of the gifts is number 459, Shepherd Me, O God. Number 459.
Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find the light in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with you, O Lord, to destroy the universe, cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exult in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew falls, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Mary Donnelly, John and Marion Fox, and our deceased mothers and fathers, and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion song is number 329, Gift of Finest Wheat, number 329.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I think we have a few announcements. You may be seated. Today's second collection is for Catholic Charities. They are the maternal side of the church who cares for all God's children, regardless of their race, color, orientation, or religion. They serve the most vulnerable in our community, from the homeless to the elderly, immigrants and youth. Each year they sell approximately 60,000 people. Thank you for your generosity. Ushers, you may now take up the collection. Save the date. To those who have joined Father Dan and given 1% or half a percent to the Archdiocesan Appeal, Annual Appeal, you will be receiving an invitation to a champagne brunch. The date for the brunch is Sunday, May 22nd, following the 10 a.m. Mass. Please RSVP to help us with the food preparation. To all the mothers present today, we have a special flower for you. We'll invite the altar servers and Eucharistic ministers to assist in passing out the flowers to you. So whether you are a mother, a grandmother, a godmother, or someone who's been a mother to others, please raise your hand so our volunteer will give you a flower. Julia, start from the. Start passing out flowers. Julia, why don't you work your way up instead? And then um, Sasha will go the other way. Julia, come all the way to the front. The reason I'm picking on her is I only know her name. Did anyone not get a flower? So this include godmothers, grandmothers, aunts, uncles will save you for uh, Father's Day. Okay, we're gonna conclude with a blessing then for our mom. So perhaps if I can invite all of you to stand 
And if you are standing next to your mom, you can put your hand on your mom. If, you're, if your mom is not here, you can hold her up. Um, or if you see somebody that around you that looks like a mom, you can also extend your hands in prayer over them on our behalf. So let's pray. God of our mothers, we praise and thank you. You are the God of Eve, mother of all the living. You are the God of Mary and mother of us all. We thank you for the gift of our mothers, for grandmothers, godmothers, and mothers-in-law. Send your Holy Spirit upon them at whose breast we were fed, by whose hands we were clean, clothed, and at times corrected, in whose laps we learned to sing and speak and play and pray, at whose sight we heard your word and celebrated your mysteries. Heal their pains and disappointments. Forgive all that needs to be forgiven. Give to them the good they have given to others. And welcome them to, um, welcome to your bosom those who have died. Fill this world, O God, with a mother's love. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gather us together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. And let's do a Hail Mary and we honor our blessed mother as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And we thank uh, everyone who was part of our procession, who brought flowers to honor Mother Mary, and especially to our second graders who came back and celebrated their second or third Holy Communion with us this day. We congratulate them. And of course, our musicians for always such a, doing such a wonderful job. And our servers, Julia and Sasha. Oh, sorry, Ella. Sasha is the mother, sorry. Ella's mom is Sasha. So to them and uh, to all of us. And may the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Um, there is hospitality after Mass. You, you can help yourself through the uh, coffee and pastries in the vestibule. Yay. Our closing song is number 704, Hail Mary, Gentle Woman. Just wisdom.
走。